I'm going to start off our discussion of logic gates by spending an entire video covering the NOT gate. And the reason for that is I think it's probably the most important of all the logic gates, and really it's the, the basis for, for all the others. So uh, you can see that the NOT gate is subtitled an inverter, uh, and that's because that's basically exactly what it does. Uh, so here we have an inactive current that goes into a NOT gate, and you can see it inverts the current and so it has an active output. And just the reverse of that is true as well. So now if we have an active current going into a NOT gate, again it's inverted and we have an inactive current coming out the other side. So these are three different models of NOT gates. They're not really connected together. Um, so just different ways you can kind of build the, uh, the same uh, thing here. So the one in the center is probably the one you will see most likely and that's pretty much just a wire that runs into a block and has a torch on the opposite face of that block. So one of the best uses for a NOT gate is to act as a repeater. So here I have a lever that supplies power to our redstone wire and that's ultimately plugged into a torch down here. But after 15 blocks, you can see where our redstone wire suddenly loses power. So redstone wire can only transfer power for 15 blocks from a power source. So in this case, the lever is acting as our power source. So we can use a NOT gate to extend that by basically just inserting it into the line of redstone wire. So I'll just uh, place a block down and then stick a torch on the front. So now I've added a second power supply in here, which is just the torch on the front of my NOT gate. And so we can potentially go another 15 blocks from this torch. One thing you'll, you'll notice, however, is that our current has been inverted by the NOT gate. So in order to get back to our original active current, we need to add a second NOT gate in the line of redstone wire. So by doing that, our first NOT gate will take the active current, invert it to an inactive current, and our second NOT gate will take that inactive current, current and invert it back to an active current, which is our original state. So another way of doing this to make it a little more compact is to actually kind of use the first model of NOT gate, which is this model here, and we can make a little addition to it to act as a compact repeater. So first of all, I'll just build the uh, original model of the NOT gate, which is just two blocks together, a torch on top of the first block, and a redstone wire on top of the second block. Now, uh, if we were just building a NOT gate, we would extend the wire right off that block. But if we want it to act as a repeater, we can stick a torch on the front of the block instead. And so this is basically uh, kind of like adding a second NOT gate onto our original one, or in this case, just making a compact repeater. So from here, we just connect up our wire, and there we go. We've now built a repeater, and so we have another 15 blocks of powered redstone wire. So the uh, next thing I'll show you is probably the single most frequent question I get doing these videos. And that's a situation like this, where we have a booster that um, what we want is for the booster to sit here in its little holding area. And then when we step on this button uh, to release the booster to go and, you know, boost another minecart down the track. However, what we're actually getting is the exact opposite behavior, uh, where the pressure plate when it's not being pressed uh, is allowing the booster to be open and then when I step on the pressure plate it actually closes the booster so it's acting properly so that's the exact opposite behavior of, of what we want and so to kind of get an idea of what exactly is going on here if I look at sort of the tracks themselves without redstone wire uh, we have three tracks here and if I place a track piece in the center, I think what most people would expect would be for the straight track section to join up. But what actually happens is the curved track section is sort of the default preference for a track piece. And what's really happening here, if we look at, at it more closely and take directions into account, uh, in my particular case, east is the direction directly ahead of me, south is to my right, 
Uh, west is directly behind me, and north is up near this big stone wall over here. So track pieces are automatically going to curve with uh, giving a preference to the south and west directions of track pieces. So uh, whenever I put a, a track piece down, it's going to join up with the south and uh, west pieces like this. Now importantly, this is an unpowered track piece, so there's no torch underneath it providing it power. But when I supply this track piece with power, just by dropping a redstone torch under here, I'm telling the track piece to switch to its powered state, which in this case is the east and south directions that are joined together like this. So by adding power to it, uh, I'm taking it out of its kind of preferred default state and transferring it to a powered state. Now when we look at our booster, we can see that we have the exact same arrangement here. We have a powered torch underneath it, and so when this button gets pressed, what we're actually doing is turning off that torch uh, by supplying the torch with power and telling that track piece to go back to its default unpowered state. Now its uh, powered state in this case is a state that's connecting the east and the uh, south directions together, which is what we see here, just like in the previous example. Uh, now, so in order to fix this, what we want is to switch the default unpressed button state to uh, be the unpowered state of the track rather than the powered state that it's at right now. And so to do that is pretty simple. We can just use an inverter and so by placing an inverter in this line of redstone, we'll have an inactive input coming from our pressure plate, but that's being inverted to an active output. So the active output is tor turning off our torch that's underneath the track piece. So now we have the track piece in its default state as the unpowered state. But when we press the button here, uh, we are providing power to our inverter. So an active current going into the inverter becomes an inactive output from it, which allows that torch to come on and tells the track piece to swap to its powered state, which is the one that connects it with our, our uh, other track right here. So it opens the booster. So for all, all the people who have built designs exactly like I have, used the exact same wiring I have in my videos, uh, and had the opposite consequence, the reason uh, that that is happening is because my track uh, piece, my booster section, is oriented in a different direction than what you may have in your world. So uh, t in order to fix that, we just need to place an inverter in the line of redstone going from our buttons to uh, our final track piece right here. And that should fix the problem. So that is about it for NOT gates. Uh, next we will probably be talking about AND and OR gates, so stay tuned for that.